Welcome everyone to Rare World Coins. Hopefully you're finding my videos interesting and informative. And hopefully uh, these videos uh, are helping you as you are a collector of world coins or US coins. Uh, these videos are here to at least assist you as a uh, method of uh, learning how to look at coins, not just US coins, but world coins and to diversify your collection. Uh, of, of course, be able to see what is a value to you as far as uh, the appeal of a coin. Uh, the major impact of, of coin collecting uh, is uh, basically you collect it, you collect coins for fun and enjoyment, especially if you're starting out. And as, as you get more knowledgeable in, in collecting coins, uh, you tend to you know, put more money into your collection. And then of course, you are trying to get the best coins possible for your collection. So basically, uh, but you know, you tend to try to basically enjoy the collecting uh, of the type of coins you like, either US Morgan dollar, US peace dollar, half dollars, early dollars, uh, pennies, nickels, quarters, dimes, uh, and so forth. Uh, these coins, uh, as you collect them, definitely will increase in value. But of course, uh, you have to be very selective in what you buy because not all coins will increase in value. Uh, if you do buy promotional coins, be careful. Uh, a lot of these coins are kind of uh, over-promoted, uh, overpriced. And then, of course, when it's time for you to sell, uh, definitely uh, you could end up losing a lot of money when it's time for you to liquidate. So avoid promotional coins. Uh, if you are uh, buying coins, uh, do some research on the coin. Do some comparable shopping. Uh, and then, of course, get some sample gradings. At least that will help you guide as you collect coins uh, that are either certified or uncertified, or in other words, raw coins. Uh, definitely uh, do some research. The three things I always uh, promote when I collect coins is the appeal, which is very important. Uh, definitely you want to be sure that the coin is has an appearance that, of course, later on when you want to sell it, you're able to sell it. Uh, the scarcity, of course, that either the coins were melted down, heavily used, not released to the public, uh, poorly struck. Uh, and of course, uh, the last thing you want to have is, of course, that there is a demand for these coins uh, that you're collecting. If there is no demand, definitely it's going to be difficult to sell. Then you could be ending up uh, selling it 25 to 50 cents to the dollar. And of course, you'll end up losing money. And of course, uh, let's try to avoid losing money in your collection. Uh, the basis for collecting is to enjoy it. And of course, get knowledge, of, get knowledge in collecting. And of course, seeing your coins appreciate in value. That's very important. And when you do decide to retire and liquidate the coins, you should be able to definitely uh, uh, reap uh, all the hard work that you uh, did in your collection. And definitely you will be rewarded with a nice return on your investment. Uh, today what we have is a couple of uh, very nice uh, walking uh, Liberty halves. Uh, this is uh, 1939, 1941D, and 1943. Uh, these are all graded by NNC. Now, NNC is not really a very reliable grading company. So you, what you want to do when you buy these coins, you buy the coin and not the slab, okay? Uh, the label is only an opinion. Uh, NNC uh, is not really recognized as a high-end third-party grading company, in my opinion. Uh, every time I try to sell an NNC, everybody says it's uh, it, if it's a 66, it's a 65. Uh, but that's only an opinion. Sometimes I'll I'll pull some of these coins out from an NNC holder that says uh, 65 and then I submit it to PCGS and I get a 66 back, okay? Or I get the same grade back. 
So it's not all that true, okay? But again, when you buy coins, you buy the coin and not the slab, okay? Uh, so be familiar with grading coins. So what we have here are three very nice coins. And of course, the first coin we'll take a look at is a 1939. Uh, this one here is a very nice coin. Nice full luster. Uh, definitely something that uh, is uh, what you want to see. Of course, when you look at these coins, uh, you want to be sure that the fields are exceptionally clean. That is, of course, the largest area here and here. Normally, these will be heavily bagged marked. And, of course, you want to be sure that you got a, a nice full head. The center line here of these coins are normally the first area that is one weekly struck by the mint or two, that is where the first wear you are gonna get is the high point. And normally what you wanna see is the hand visible on this particular coin. Normally when I see the hand visible or the thumb, that basically means that the coin is pretty much all intact, okay? And of course is highly struck up for this particular date. Now this one here is graded MS66 plus. I guess this one here could be probably broken out and sent to PCGS or NGC for a third party grading opinion and taken away from this NNC slab. Okay, but the coin here is a very nice, highly desirable coin. Uh, very nice, well, well struck, full mint luster, exceptionally uh, well defined on this particular coin. Let's look on the reverse side. Uh, the reverse side, you'll see the walking eagle. Again, this one here is a very nice full luster coin. And of course, the highest point in the area that you wanna see are the breast feathers of the eagle. And of course, this is the highest point of the coin. Definitely, if you can see the breast feather of the eagle there, and in this area here, definitely you got pretty much a fully struck coin. And of course, as you see from the field, very nicely defined, highly desirable on this beautiful 1939 half dollar. Very beautiful coin. The next coin is a 1941D struck at the Denver Mint. Again, very nice coin. Also, this one here has a little bit of gold toning noted around the edge and also on the fields. Again, noted here that you are slight weakness uh, is seen uh, on the middle part. As you can see, note here that the hand is barely visible at all. The head is nice and fully struck there. So it has some nice definition, but it has some weakness noted on the center area. Uh, common known strike issues with these dates. Again, uh, highly desirable if it was fully struck. So this one here, not so much, but the fields are very nice. Uh, hardly any contact marks on the coin. Uh, so this is a very nice coin, nice original uh, coin. So very highly desirable in this particular condition. Now, as far as the grade, NNC MS67, again, you can agree or disagree on the grade. It's just an opinion. This one here could be cracked open and submitted to PCGS or NGC to get a second opinion. But again, a very nice, highly desirable coin uh, for this particular 1941. Denver Mint. And of course, on the reverse, again, you'll note the high points. Again, the breast feathers are very important. And as you can see, it is well defined on the eagle itself. So this one here is a very nice coin with nice edge toning. So this is a very nice original coin with full luster. Very desirable coin from the Denver Mint, and of course, highly collectible in this very high grade. So if you're collecting uh, the walking half dollars, they're very popular from 
1916 on up to 1947. Again, these are a good series of collection uh, to acquire, uh, either the long set or the short set, but definitely very nice. This one here, 1943, graded by NNC as MS66. This one here, very nice. This one here also, you, this one here, you can see uh, the thumb separation. And of course, a nice full head, nice clean fields, very desirable 1943, struck at the Philadelphia Mint. On the reverse, again, you look at the breast feathers and definitely it is nicely defined on the coin all the way down to the leg. Of course, you can see everything, nice full luster, highly desirable in this particular condition. Uh, these are very nice coins. Uh, you can get these coins still in uh, unslabbed or raw. Uh, and of course, uh, any of these coins in this brilliant uncirculated, you don't have to get them in um, nice gem BU as a beginner collector. You can pick them up as a nice, brilliant and circulated uh, coins and start collecting the series in just uncirculated or brilliant uncirculated and start adding those dates to your collection if you are a beginner, beginner collector. As of course, if you start to be an advanced collector, uh, you want to get the higher grades, MS 65, 66, 67. And of course, maybe if you decide that you want to uh, get some of the rare types, uh, the proof version of these coins. And of course, they are, they are extremely rare with a very small mintage of a few thousand coins. And definitely many of the proof coins are impaired. And of course, trying to get one that is in proof 66 or 67 or 68 definitely will be a price coin for your collection. Again, the series is exceptionally very nice set to collect. Definitely highly desirable. Uh, collecting the whole series from 1916 to 1947 definitely will get pricey if you tried to collect these coins in uncirculated condition. Uh, but you can always do the best you can. And of course, the rare coins, you can just pick up in fine or very fine condition just to fill the slots since they are get since they do get pretty pricey. Well, hopefully this information will help you out. And if you like to collect a nice series of coins, uh, the walking halves from 1916 to 1947 is a very nice uh, series of coins to collect. Very popular highly in demand by collectors due to its very nice, beautiful design. Uh, get, be sure that when you get these coins, they are as brilliant as you can get them. Uh, be sure they do have the appeal and uh, the scarcity. And of course, they will definitely have the demand. So hopefully uh, this information will be helpful along with the video. And if you like the information and video, uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll, you'll get notified as I upload new videos to rare world coins. Till next time, you have a great day.